But in Jewish consciousness, the mind and the heart work in tandem. They're partners. They work together to help attach us to every moment and every experience and every person that we meet, every place that we go in a meaningful way. In other words, how heartfully am I present in that moment with that person in that relationship with this idea? How much is that idea part of me? Two of Jerusalem's sages were walking down the street one afternoon. The elder, the head of a prestigious Talmudic institution in downtown Jerusalem. The younger, ultimately would be his successor. We're walking through the street discussing that day's lesson, perhaps talking about the progress of the students, the future. When they were walking down the block in a nondescript afternoon, and the elder sage, Rabbi Chaim Shmulevitz, one of Jerusalem's greats, paused at the entrance of a shoe store. He stood there at the entrance of the shoe store. There was a, a box of children's shoes there that were closed out on sale. As his ultimate successor and study partner, Rabbi Nassim Svi Finkel kind of stood there waiting. He seemed to be deep, engrossed, lost in thought for a couple of moments when the younger Rabbi Finkel noticed his mentor shedding a tear. After a few moments standing there consciously, Rav Chaim Shmulevitz, the elder, kind of turned and continued walking. At which point Rabbi Finkel, second sage, turned and said, Rabbi, Rabbi, what, everything okay? seemed to be moved by, <laughs> by a shoe store. And Rav Chaim Shmulevitz said, you know, I'm looking at these, this box of shoes, just imagined a young parent coming to the store, a few shekel in their pocket, picking out a pair of shoes for their child, for their young son, for their daughter, First pair of shoes. The whole world is open in front of them. Where's that child going to go? What are they going to grow up to be? What type of life are they going to have? Maybe, maybe the, that parent, maybe that mother waited a long time for that child to, be, to come into the world and the blessing wasn't easy to arrive. Or maybe someone will pass by this box of shoes who isn't blessed with children, who's looking for their soulmate. And and, and, and they'll feel broken by it. They'll, 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 they'll yearn and they'll feel sad. Or they'll feel hopeful. How, how could you not be moved? How could you not shed a tear? Beyond cognition, beyond intellect, beyond the world of ideas, beyond the world of information, beyond wisdom of the mind, there's Chachmat HaLev. There's what we call in our tradition wisdom of the heart. Beyond mindfulness is a foundation of heartfulness. In Eastern tradition, in the Asian language, the word for mind and heart are one and the same. The mind and the heart, it's the same word. But in Jewish consciousness, the mind and the heart work in tandem. They're partners. They work together. They form a partnership to guide us through this world, through this life, to help attach us to every moment and every experience and every person that we meet, every place that we go in a meaningful way. The beginning and end of our Torah, of our Book of Wisdom, the Book of Wisdom that forms the instruction book for life, kind of the, sets the context for all of reality, for the rules of humankind, the last letter and the first letter of our Torah form the word lev, heart. Kind of to direct our focus and our attention in a world where accomplishments are valued and, and our, our, 
our, our esteem and our, and our sense of accomplishment is established by what we understand, what we know, what we've achieved, what we've done, where we've been, what we've patented, the cases that we've won, what we own, to kind of direct our focus inward. So to speak, to say that our, our value attribution has to be one which works from the inside out as opposed to from the outside in. It's not so much what we know and what we understand, but it's, it's how much we've able, we're able to process that, and to become one with that, and to feel, and to experience that in a vibrant and real way. In other words, how heartfully am I present in that moment with that person, in that relationship, with this idea? How much is that idea part of me? Have I processed it? Is it now, am I now one with it? Am I experiencing it? Am I connected to it? That's Chochmat HaLev, the wisdom of the heart. The great master Ibn Achman of Breslov explains that it's not just that a human being has a heart that pumps blood to all the organs and sends vitality to help us go through life and experience the world and fulfill all the functions that a human being has to, but the world has a heart. The inanimate world has a heart. And that heart is the source of all of humankind's yearning and wanting and desires, which is really the strongest force in creation. What we're hoping for, what, we're, what, we're, what we aspire to be. That want, that desire, that yearn is what drives all of humanity. The technological revolution, all the philosophical and political change and currents of language and art, trends in philosophy and sociology and history, wars and conquering, everything is driven and finds its root, finds its seed at the core of humankind's yearning and wanting. And there's a lot of knowledge and we're, we're flooded with knowledge. But until we're able to assimilate those ideas, that knowledge, and bring together those disparate facts and information, then we're not expressing our humanity in its ultimate form. We're not fulfilling our purpose in creation because we're not connected. A teacher of mine once uh, referred to it as E.T. syndrome. Everybody remembers E.T.? E.T. has a gigantic head with a lot of ideas and a lot of information. Maybe he went to a really good university and then another one and got another degree and another fellowship and another postdoc and has a lot of information. He's read a lot of books. And maybe he's done a lot of research a lot of experiences and been lots of places and know lots of people. He's a really, really big head that's full with a tiny little neck and a scrawny little body. When the mind, when the head, when the information, when the ideas are out of sync with the heart, it's like we're an alien. We don't belong here. It's not, we're not in our right place. We have to phone home or Skype home or... FaceTime home, or Snapchat home, or Tweet home, or Poke home. But everyone knows that all of those ways are not really being connected to home. To be home, to be really truly be present, we have to be not just connected in mind, but be connected in heart. Otherwise, we're aliens. We're, we're just kind of roaming through space, placeless, not being connected. Chochmat HaLev, the wisdom of the heart, is really the primary qualification for being a soul architect, for being someone who is able to look within, find meaning, purpose, not just in our lives, but to be able to transmit that to others in a healthy, normal way with our friends, with people that we meet, in the context of, of our business, in the context of our, uh, of our family life and of our professional life. Chochmat HaLev is also the way the Bible describes as the primary qualification for the architect of the temple, which was the headquarters of consciousness at the core of the world and the heart of the world in Jerusalem. The temple was the meeting place for all of mankind, a place where heaven and earth met, a place of synthesis, where all the nations of the world kind of ultimately would come together. Jerusalem is the capital of wanting, of yearning, of desire. It's the heart of the world that pumps vitality, consciousness, 
to all of humanity. And it's called lev. It's called the heart. And only someone who had chachmat halev, the wisdom of the heart, would be able to envision such a structure. Ultimately be able to build such a structure and actualize such a vision of bringing people together. The world is getting smaller. We're connected in a way like we've never been connected before. And at the same time, the dialectic is that we're more divided. The gap between people and real connection, real chibur, real interaction, real connectivity is, is it's getting harder and harder to have a conversation, to look someone in the eye, to know that someone's listening, to be heard, and to hear, to accept. Because we're so connected all the time. Because we have so much information, but that information hasn't moved from our gigantic alien head often enough to our human heart. And that's a state of exile. The way the prophets described exile, alienation, distance, feeling far from oneself, far from where we want to be, and far from way, the way we envision the world ought to be, is specifically through the metaphor of our heart being turned into a heart of stone. When we have a heart of stone, so we don't feel joy. We're at a wedding and we're, we're busy with something else. We're not able to dance in a way that's free and reckless. When we're out with someone that we care about, sitting, we're not able to focus because we have a heart of stone. Those moments kind of just are deflected. They bounce off of us. We're distant. We're in a state of exile. Having a lave ha'evin, a heart of stone, means that I could sit and read the paper or scroll down my news feed and see tragedy after tragedy, pain, devastation in the world, suffering, and just continue eating my cheese danish and coffee with creamer without thinking, without being mindful because I'm not being heartful, because I'm not present emotionally, because... I haven't begun to chisel away at that heart of stone. But the good news is, Lev Tahor Barali Elohim. The psalmist tells us that we are created with a pure heart, the heart that's filled with love, filled with light. It's the seat of the divine presence. It's the capital and the headquarters of divine indwelling in this world is in the heart of mankind. It's the source of prophecy, of inspiration, an infinite source of yearning and wanting and an ability to connect, an infinite source of wisdom to experience and to feel. At the core, we all have a heart of flesh. And as the world gets closer to redemption, as the world gets closer to its purpose, to fulfilling its purpose collectively, we're able to sense, we're able to feel the redemption of the world depends on the redemption of the individual. The redemption of the individual begins and ends in our hearts. When we interact with people, when we meet friends, when we sit with loved ones, when we, we're in a crowd, we often kind of like share ideas and there's this meeting of the minds. But a more redeemed, a more actualized way of interacting is creating a melding of the hearts, a more heartful, present interaction. And the good news is that that's the most natural, simple way. It's just a, re a restoration of that simplicity, of that organic, natural, human way that we were created that will bring about a more redeemed way of expressing ourselves, and connecting and hearing and interacting with other people, connecting the last and first letter of our Torah, of our source of wisdom, to bring back the lave, to bring back the heart to our relationships, to our workplace, to our creativity, to kind of breathe vitality and life force into everything that we're doing so that when we're walking down the street, we pass by a shoe store and see a box of shoes there, that itself is something which moves us, that's meaningful, that's something that, that we're connected to. And if we're able to connect to that, then everything that we're doing and then everything that we're going, everywhere we're going and everyone that we meet, those relationships will be deeper, they'll be more meaningful because they'll be more filled with wisdom of the heart.